Welcome back folks. So today we're going to embark on a, another little project uh, sponsored by our friends over at PCB Way. And what I'm looking at to do today is you know, control the real world. And uh, you know, it's, it, little things like uh, Arduino based microcontrollers or pickaxe based or, or even microcomputers uh, that can interface through cards like this. They, they have a certain amount of drive. They have a certain amount of ability to drive things. You know, like I think uh, the, the pickaxe, if I'm not mistaken, can put out in, around about uh, 30 milliamps, maybe 40 maximum, absolute maximum. Same with this, the Arduino. Uh, on these boards here, I use uh, 74 AC logic, so that can push up to 60 milliamps. And that, that can do quite a bit. I mean, you, you, can, you can switch on an LED, you can run a very tiny motor, you can power a relay. You can do quite a bit as far as interfacing to the real world is concerned. And certainly you can interface to other devices uh, with the, without going too much further than just this. But what if, uh, what if you wanted to uh, interface to something a little bit more dramatic, you know, like a, if, if you wanted to control a big bulb like this, or uh, a large motor of some kind, or a huge relay, or something that possibly is run off a completely different voltage supply, don't even share the same ground. And it, this comes up quite often in real world control. Like uh, it, if you go into an industrial atmosphere, and you'll have racks of controllers in the back and they go out and control all sorts of machines on the floor that are running at different voltages, running off different grounds, running whatever. Well, it, it, it can be done fairly easily. And I have an idea in mind for a little module that can be used uh, with any of these devices here uh, within a certain envelope of application. It's not going to do everything or anything, but it'll do quite a bit. Okay, so let's go up to our design computer and have a look at what I have in mind. Before we do, let's have a word for our sponsor. Just so I show everyone my personal journey with PCBWay, if you've been watching my channel, um, you know that they are a sponsor of mine for some of the little projects I do. But long, long before that, long before I started doing these, I was using PCBWay to realize my designs, put my projects into form. It's going back quite a while, this one here. I can't even remember the name of the account I had for when I got these this done, but I was uh, I was more or less a beginner laying out PC boards. It's not very well laid out, but the PC boards are excellent. And I usually I get them to build some platform specific prototyping cards as well. For those times you know when I can't wait the couple of weeks it takes to get a board in from PCB Way and I have to get something out, I have these made up as well so I can pop something together pretty quick. And they're designed to fit into some of the projects that I've come up with along the way. Some of them have been fairly simple, you know, things like this. This is like a little Arduino thing, and this is a little power supply that fits into a breadboard. And, and some of them get a little bit more complex, like this system here, which is a, a, a computer, a stackable computer. So you, you can have the computer on the top, and then you can stack various boards underneath for various functions and do even more complex things like this uh, hexadecimal terminal go on up to even more complex things like this computer here which has got its its own motherboard built into it and can take some pretty amazing cards on it that quite expandable and that you know here's a perfect example that you have five of these boards done up for five dollars and you know i made a mistake on this one so I got them to make up another one uh, that doesn't have the mistake on it. And uh, I'm going to do a project based on this um, coming up. Yeah, so I mean like for $5, it, you know, if I have to, if I absolutely have to use one of these, I will. Most of the time I do have a couple of weeks to wait for the boards to come in. But that's it. That's my personal journey with, um, with PCB Way. Uh, they've been in my life for a long, long time. And they've helped me bring many, many, many projects to reality. Excellent people to do business with. Okay, so here we are at the uh, design center here at Unibyte Labs. And uh, w the device we're going to use to allow us to have this uh, module, this control module, is going to be a photocoupler. What a photocoupler does for us, it provides complete isolation between the environment that's driving and the environments being driven. 
And uh, the, the, basically the way they work, so you have inside this module, you have a, an LED and a phototransistor. And, and you know, this is, this is the basic circuit. This is it. Uh, you know, this one's slightly different, only in the fact that it has a signal generator going into it. But basically what happens is you, you send your signal through the LED. The LED lights up at varying degrees depending on the signal coming into it and turns on the transistor at varying degrees depending upon the, the way you have this circuit set up. So speaking of circuits, I mean, they, like I said, this is basically the circuit. You have the, the LED uh, being driven through a resistor, as most LEDs should be. And then you have the output, and you have a, a, a load resistance on the output. And then the, from there, it can go on into some other device. Now, you could have a, another power transistor there powering a big relay. You could have a, a MOSFET, which is going to be our application, that will allow us to drive fairly decent DC loads and have them completely isolated, run off completely different voltage than the controller itself. So let's have a look at uh, the schematic we're going to use. Uh, the, this is based on the design actually I'd done a couple of years back and it, I've just made some changes. So that design uh, was for the particular use I had at the time. So I have made some alterations in some of these values and inserted a couple of extra components just to make it more adjustable. Now, the way I have it set up here, I think uh, this should work uh, with a, you know, a, a wide envelope of application, let's call it that. So we have the input coming in here to the opto isolator. In this case, I'm using a, a PC817 as I showed in that data sheet here. And this is a sharp device. I just happen to have a whole pile of these. I got them at a really good price. So I tend to try and throw them into things, but you could use almost any photocoupler, whatever you want to call it, that uh, you know fits into the same physical parameters here. So the diode on pins one and two and the transistor collector on pin four and the emitter on pin three. And that's kind of a jelly bean setup anyway. So you could use anything like that. You just have to be careful about some of the parameters we'll go into a little bit later as to what your resistor values are going to be. But uh, even this setup here could cover a, a lot of different things. So our input comes in through here, goes through these resistances into the LED in this side of the photocoupler and our transistors out here. And this is our resistive load here, our RL. We also made that adjustable. This is adjustable too. And we're going into uh, an FDP8880 MOSFET, which is a, is a fairly chunky device. It doesn't have a huge voltage range. Um, I think the maximum gate voltage you can have on it is about 20 volts. So that's kind of where this whole circuit is limited to. So if you need to go beyond that, this will work just as well with another MOSFET. I mean, you can put a higher voltage MOSFET in there. You can put a lower power MOSFET if you don't need the kind of power that this produces. It, it's all fine. I mean, this the basic circuit's not going to change. It's just some of these parameters here are going to change here, like the resistance is going in here, and the resistance here driving the helping drive the MOSFET. So uh, this is quite a bit of variability built into this particular circuit here. So you could you could throw in a lot of different devices as far as your optocoupler and your MOSFET are concerned into this circuit. But for my purposes, these are the ones I'm going to use. So let's have another look at, at both of those devices here. So one of the things that you need to be careful about is the current transfer ratio. Now, you want to get the thing biased so that uh, you're, you're putting enough current into it so you're in this region here, so that you're, you're getting maximum benefit out of the optocoupler as far as drive is concerned. Some other things you need to worry about, it, depending on the speed, if you're just switching a relay on and off or lamp or a heater or something like that on and off, then your response time and your frequency response are not going to be that important. But let's say you want to do something with uh, respect to pulse width modulation. And these things become a little bit more critical. But in most cases, if you had a, a pulse frequency of about a kilohertz up to 10 kilohertz, you know, this, this stuff is not all that important. But the way the circuit is designed, you can tweak the resistance on the load to, to get very close to what you want as far as higher frequencies or lower frequencies are concerned. And then over on the MOSFET side, some of the, the things to be concerned about are, yeah, it's it's got to meet your specifications as far as current capability is concerned. 
And uh, for this device, it's not so important to have a, a data level MOSFET or a low level MOSFET. And then I'm talking about the, the low voltage required to turn it on, like the, the gate threshold voltage. Because basically you'd be running it at whatever voltage you're going to be driving through your ultimate load. And generally that's not a problem. If you're up around 10 or 12 volts, most MOSFETs in the world will be fully turned on at that kind of voltage. This one here in particular starts turning on around about three volts and you're mostly turned on at four and a half. So it's, it's, it's fine if you wanted to use it in a five volt or six volt, seven volt environment, it'll work. It's actually a pretty good MOSFET. If you, can, if you can pick up a bunch of these, they're pretty nice to have around. But, you know, it's a 30 volt, 54 amp. And uh, the lowest on resistance is 11.6 milliohms. Well, the specifications around that. But one of the things um, that will change from going from one MOSFET to the other, other than just the, the current capability and the, and the voltage capability, is the gate capacitance. And that will have a huge effect upon that those other parameters we're looking at on the optocoupler as far as frequency response and response time are concerned. So this one has a fairly chunky gate capacitance. You can see here it's up uh, around about 1.2 nanofarad. Like I said, this is, a, this is a fairly nice device. <clears throat> I like it. I use it a lot. Again, I, I bought a ton of these when I saw them. I'm generally not up much more than 30 volts on my things I control. So these suit me for, for the kinds of things that I work on just fine. But there are some of the things you need to keep in consideration. Like I said, that, like, that, that you don't have to use these specific components. You can use other components, but just keep in mind that you may have to change some of the resistance values uh, in order to get into the range, the operating range that you want to work in with your particular devices. I want to look, point out a couple of things in the layout that I made for this. Um, first of all, I, I use extra large traces for the load side of things. So you've got your power coming in here, down to your MOSFET, and then going out to your load here. And so those traces are pretty big. You can see here on the bottom, this whole trace here is, is ground and is, it is connected to the, to the copper pore on the top here too. See so all these vias I put through here. So that thermally binds the, the, this copper pore here with the copper pore on the bottom, this one here, and it provides uh, a heat sink for the device. With this, you got about uh, three and a half square inches of copper to provide a heat sink. So this should be able to handle quite a little bit of, of dissipation and just without adding a heat sink. Of course, you can also add a heat sink. The device is going to mount horizontally on there, so you could sandwich a heat sink between the board and the device to get a little bit more heat sinking if that's what you require. Uh, but that's it. It's very basic little double-sided layout here. But anyway, this has already been sent off to PCBWay for manufacturing, and I should have this back in a week or two, and we can build one of these up and put it through its paces and show you what I mean by adjusting the current through the diode and of course the current through the collector on the load as well and see how you can maximize performance that way. But the important thing about this little device here is that it's going to allow us to connect up almost any kind of uh, controller. I think uh, thinking about what I've put here, it should be able to handle anywhere from 2.5 volt signals up to 10 volts or so without damaging this optocoupler. And again, with, with this particular MOSFET in here, you're, you're not going to want to go much above 20 volts or something like that because that, that's the absolute maximum rating on the, the gate voltage. All right, folks, that's all I have for you today. I'd like to thank PCBWay for sponsoring this video and sponsoring this project. And we'll see you in our next video. And uh, I hope to see you again when these come in and we build up one of these and put it to use. All right, bye-bye.